Please give all your love for the wonderful Mr. Rod Gilbert! This is the best place in the world to do comedy, isn't it? Yeah. It is, it is, because you love a laugh, don't you? Yeah. So that you love a laugh. It's so uh, last year, I had a, uh, last year I, I was, uh, I was staying, what's that street? With uh, St. Mary Street, is that the one off the Royal Mile there? And I had a first floor fat flat. And I, so every day I was at the same height as the open top. <laughs> Misery tour. I was at exactly, when I used to lead, sit at my window, I was at exactly the same height as the poor, miserable, sodden Japanese tourists. <laughs> huddled in the wind and driving rain in their emergency ponchos. <laughs> their faces set like stone against the Scottish elements, like little shrink-wrapped gargoyles hanging off the side. <laughs> They'd open their mouths and water would spew down the side of the bus. <laughs> and I was sat there, I would just get the odd, the odd word. The odd word of the commentary would waft in on the wind. Have you heard the commentary? It's hilariously miserable. The, <laughs> the odd word, the odd ancient grudge would float in on the wind, you know, like 10,000 Scots died. <laughs> Centuries of oppression. <laughs> I went on one a few days later, I came off like William Bloody Wallace, so I was like, come on! We can do this! I was going to go shopping in the afternoon, I ended up marching on Cumbria instead. I, <laughs> oh, it's nice to be back on. I'm staying here tonight, that's good. I, yes, I'm staying. Well, it means I don't have to drive home, because this job is terrible for that, you know, you usually have to... To drive home late at night. I hate nighttime driving, do you? What are those things they put on when you drive in late at night? Not lights, no! <laughs> on the radio, man! Those things when you're driving along, you know, they're not adverts. They're like, what do you call them? They're like infomercials or. Do you know the things I mean when you're driving along and you're tired and it's late? And then the radio says, you're tired, it's late. <laughs> The monotony of driving is sending you to sleep. I'm thinking, you're not really helping your pal. You know, those things, I hate those. I was driving back to Cardiff once. And have you heard this one? I was about half past one in the morning. I was on the M4 there, and this one came on. Have you heard this? It said, fall asleep at the wheel, and you could travel further than you think. <laughs> you could travel further than you think. In fact, in just six seconds, it said a car on the motorway could travel up to one-eighth of a mile. Right? It was half past one in the morning when I heard that. I had 110 miles still to go. Yeah, so I did a few calculations. <laughs> I set my alarm for three, you see. <laughs> I must have slept through it. I woke up driving through Ireland the next morning. I'd been on the, been on the car ferry and all sorts. <laughs> I flew to, um, you fly, you go all over the world with this job. I flew to um, Australia. Uh, oh, are you Australian? Yes. We're not up there. Where are you from? I'm from Brisbane. From Brisbane. I went to um, Melbourne. <laughs> Do you know Melbourne? <laughs> Can you explain that flight to me? What, the distance? Well, I left my house at half past 12 on a Monday. I got to your place Wednesday, Tita. What the hell happened to Tuesday? <laughs> I had stuff to do. <laughs> and when I left Melbourne, my flight left at half past six on a Monday morning. It took exactly 24 hours, but I still got back Monday night. What the hell happened to Tuesday again? <laughs> what is it with you people on Tuesdays? <laughs> I flew to, um, I flew to Ireland. Any Irish in? I flew, to, I flew to Dublin a few years ago and I, I've told this story all over the world, you know, and everywhere I've gone I've blamed a different airline for this story, but the true story happened on a flight to Dublin and I can't tell you the name of the airline I flew with for legal reasons. I, we call them Brian Air, right? <laughs> and 
listen, I was excited. I was going, I was going abroad. I'm Welsh. I bought shorts. <laughs> T-shirts, sunglasses. They don't even sell them in Wales. I had to go to Bristol to buy them. <laughs> I was excited. And then I bought myself a brand new suitcase as well. One of the posh ones with the wheels. And, I, and then I flew to Dublin. I will show you what I found when I arrived in Dublin airport just a few hours later. That. It's not funny. Anyway, I get the last laugh. It still works. You can see where some hilarious baggage handlers put a heavy label on that. Look. Bend your knees is the advice to anybody tackling that baby. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. The flight was, ab the flight was about 9 99 I wasn't expecting miracles. If I'm completely honest with you, the first three times this went round the baggage carousel, I laughed. <laughs> everybody laughed the first three times. It was hilarious. The staff, the passengers, everybody was having a great time. And then one by one, they went home. It was just me and Liz. I thought I could sort it out. I took this to the desk. I marched over. So I'll sort this out. I'll sort. I didn't know what I was up against. The girl on the desk looks at me. No hint of irony. She says, what seems to be the problem? I said, mainly it's about my luggage. She said, is that not it? I said, this is some of it. Don't get me wrong. I'm thrilled to get this back. The thing is, I'm here for a month. I'm pretty sure I packed more than this. She started asking me those questions. You know those questions they ask you in airports? Uh, I've heard these questions all over the world. They're normally perfectly sensible questions. The, there was no need for it. She said, could anybody have interfered with it? <laughs> I said, we probably shouldn't rule that out. She said, have you left it unattended at any point? I said, I suppose I must have. I'm not the most observant person in the world, but if this had happened while I was wheeling it through the airport, I think I'd have noticed Surely it would have gone very light, very quickly. I said, did you pack it yourself? I thought, why? What are you suggesting? I think my mother packed for me and thought this is all I'd need. She said, we'll do a report. Don't you worry, Mr. Gilbert. We'll soon have your luggage back. I thought, good. This is progress. Do your bloody report. And it was all going quite well until about question three. She took my name. She took my address. And then she said, does your luggage have any distinguishing features, Mr. Gilbert? It's got a long black handle, if that's any use. And she wrote that down. Everyone's a comedian in Ireland, aren't they? Everyone's, especially the taxi drivers, they're the worst. Because I walked from the airport to the taxi rank. And bear in mind that I didn't have a five-minute story to tell. I just had 22 kilograms of missing shit. I wasn't looking too pleased, you know, but the, the guy in the first taxi, he saw me coming along with this, his eyes lit up. <laughs> you could see what he was going to, it was so predictable, you could see what he could, oh, he walks down to the back. <laughs> so, pops up in the boot, oh. <laughs> typical Irish wit, he says, do you want a hand with that? <laughs> no, thank you. I think I can manage. I said, if you really want to help, you can, you can take the trolley back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's lovely to be back in Edinburgh. Hopefully see you all at the festival. You've been absolutely lovely. And Rod Gilbert, thank you very, 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 very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.